Hey y'all, Brady from TouchLab here. Today we're going to look at three ways to make your Kotlin code multi-platform friendly. If you already have an Android or JVM code base and you're looking to make it multi-platform, then this video is for you. Let's start by looking at a simple example. This Kotlin JVM library just holds a single class, price. There are three things that keep price in JVM only land. One, price depends on big decimal from Java's math. Two, Android's parsable interface and the JVM only at parcelize annotation to generate that implementation. Three, our serialization library, Mashi, is JVM only. We have three problems and we'll use a different approach for each. Let's get started. To make our library KMP friendly, we'll need to make some changes to our build.gradle.kts and our directory structure. Let's start with Gradle. At the top of the plugins block, we'll remove the Kotlin Android plugin and add the Kotlin multi-platform plugin. Let's remove any references we might have to cap as it does not work easily with KMP and we won't be needing it after the changes we'll make. Next, we'll comment out the dependencies block and add a Kotlin block with two targets, Android and iOS. After this, you should do a sync. Now we'll declare our source sets, common main, Android main, and iOS main. Sync your project and it should succeed. We'll uncomment our dependencies and put them in the Android source set. Sync your project and it should succeed. All right, great. We have our Gradle setup working. Now we just need to change the directory structure. With JVM code, we keep our source code in source slash main. In KMP, we'll keep our source code in source slash common main, Android main, iOS main, etc. Let's add those directories. We'll move the price class from source main to source Android main. We can remove the Java directory in source main, but we'll keep the Android manifest there. Great. Our project is KMP ready, but we only have sources in Android, so we're not actually building for other platforms yet. Let's reference prices problems again. One, big decimal, two, parcelable, and three, Mashi. We'll start with big decimal. We're going to use expect actual syntax to create iOS and Android implementations of a class we'll call big num. We'd like to just expose the add and subtract functionality to iOS and Android and have it behave the same on both platforms. We'll initialize big num with a string. For Android, our backing value will be a big decimal. And for iOS, our backing value 
will be an S decimal number. Now, instead of initializing price with a big decimal, we'll initialize it with big num. Great, now we can use the price class from common code. Next, let's look at parcelable and parcelize. For parcelize, we'll use an optional expect annotation. For Android, the actual type will be a type alias for app parcelize. And for iOS, we don't do anything because it's optional. For parcelable, we'll create an empty expect interface. For Android, we'll type alias to the real parcelable. For iOS, we'll declare an empty actual interface. Great, now we'll add parcelize and parcelable to our expect classes and our actuals. Here's big num and Android and iOS. And then now price can also get that same treatment. Great, we solved our first problem, big decimal, with big num. We use expect actual syntax to wrap native number classes. Then we looked at parcelable and parcelize, and we used the optional expectation to get around annotations on native. And then we also used an empty interface to make that as smooth as possible. Now we're gonna look at our last problem, serialization. Let's take a look. Mashi is an excellent serialization library, but it only works on the JVM. Fortunately, JetBrains offers a fantastic multi-platform serialization library, Kotlin X Serialization. So we'll use that instead. We'll make some changes to Gradle. Let's add the Kotlin X Serialization plugin in our plugins block and add the Kotlin X JSON Serialization library. Okay, let's try to make price serializable using the at serializable annotation. This should just generate it for us, but it's not because big num is not serializable. So let's go do that. And let's just uh, add serializable here. That should do it. Oh, no, it doesn't. The class is not serializable automatically because it has primary constructor parameters that are not properties. Okay, so we might say, uh, let's just make that a primary constructor property. Now we run into another issue. Expected class constructor cannot have a property parameter. So what do we do? We can't get this serializer created automatically for us, but we can create our own. So let's do that. Of note is this call to value dot to string, which delegates to each platform. We overwrote it in the iOS target to call ns decimal numbers dot string value. And for Android, we're using big decimals dot to plain string. When we decode that string, we should be able to use it to create an identical big num. Now we should be able to write at serializable and to just work, right? There's just one more step we need to take and that's to specify our serializer. We'll take this, add it, Here, iOS, and here for Android. And now big num is serializable. That means the price should now be serializable as well. That's all there is to it. We did it. We got our Kotlin JVM code to work on iOS as well. 
Awesome. So to recap, here are three ways we did that. One, we used expect actual syntax and delegated to each platform, like we did when we transitioned from Big Decimal to Big Num. And two, we used optional expectation and type aliases to work around annotations, like at Parcelize. And three, sometimes the easiest thing to do is to just substitute one library that's just JVM with one that's KMP friendly. That's it for today. Now go forth, share all the code you possibly can in Kotlin. And remember, sharing is caring.